ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to me? I got ADHD. It's about anything. It's about everything. It's ADHD. Welcome back to ADHD with me, Travis Mills. Before you do anything, if you're watching this on YouTube, click subscribe, leave me a comment, let's chat. That's the only way I'm gonna know if you really watch the video. If you're listening to this, thank you. Subscribe to the pod if you haven't already. Give it five stars. My guest today is Thank You X. Yo, yes, yo. Yes, yes, yes. Um, dude, how would you how would you describe yourself for everybody listening? Um, Cause you do a lot. I don't want to just say that, you know, you're an artist. I'm 5'11". Uh, <laughs> um, handsome. <laughs> tall, d- medium height, dark, <laughs> handsome. Um, I'm an artist, entrepreneur of sorts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Artists. I came up in the street art scene, kind of more graduated now towards like the fine art. So definitely, yeah. man. Um, and we've been friends for a few years, so it's yep. great to have you on. I'm glad we could, I've been, I've been approaching you since I really started the pod. Uh, and I'm glad that we can make this happen. I know you keep dangling this carrot no. and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm down. Let's go. <laughs> you're like, all right, next week, next week. But our, our schedule is aligned and we are here. We are here. We made it happen. Um, yep. and you know, I'm, I'm excited to have you on because I probably, I think I have three pieces from you. Yeah. Yeah. Like my a house. Little, little gallery going on. I do. On. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm crushing it, dude. I think I'm like, might be your biggest collector. <laughs> I'm, you might be. What's funny is there's actually a few people that have like multiple pieces of me and, uh, it's like from different phases as well as For you sure. do. So yeah. it's cool. Is yeah. that weird to think that people have like pieces of you inside of their, uh, inside of their home? Uh, yeah, but you know, what's cool is that I get to see them because, mm. you know, like you make something, right? Like you make a song yeah, and you still get to hear that song whenever you want. Sometimes. Well, I mean like you, if it's good enough. Right. But I'm just saying like, okay, you make a song at any point you could at least pull that up and listen to it. Right. Yeah. And so you get like, whereas a painter paints something and if it gets sold to somewhere, then you never see that again. Damn. Right. Yeah. So when it goes to someone that I am friends with and that I like, and that I can hang with, it's nice because then I can go kind of a little visit it. Do you yeah. remember the first like time that you you drew something or painted something and you're like, damn, I'm kind of good at this? Um, honestly, I still don't think I'm good. I still think I'm really? trying. I still think I'm trying to like to get there. Um, but I don't know. I think that just might be the crazy artist in me that's like always doubting myself and pushing myself to the next level. But I don't know. Like I I saw like a I saw that there was something there. I more did it because I felt like I needed an outlet. And then other people started telling me it was good. And so that's when I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like I almost needed someone else's like to, I didn't think it was You good. needed like almost for, like someone else to be like, yo, your shit's dope. Right. For I was to just, take it seriously. I was just doing it purely just to do it. Cause I like needed some self-fulfillment. Um, and yeah, then like once other people started noticing it and like commenting on it, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like that's cool that other people liked it. Uh, but I originally was just like, yeah, I just have to make art. Cause I was just doing so much like creative stuff for other people always. Yeah. And, um, like actually like, I think when we first met, I was working for the music merchandising company Bravado and we had a meeting with you and, um, we were going to like work together. This is years though, before we actually met yeah, yeah, this, again. This is when we met in like a, like a, a very business. business professional way. We didn't like connect in any way. It was just very like transactional kind of I feeling. I don't know. Yeah. I, kind, I vaguely remember that. Yeah. And so, um, and what happened, I went down to Bravado Yeah, and we had like a merch meeting. Yep. And you're with, uh, like one, your old manager. Okay. Um, and that's so crazy, yeah. dude. But, um, you know, I was basically working for this merchandise company as like the art director. And so I was pumping out like tons of like graphic design t-shirts for like all these major stars, like a lot, which is really rad at first. Um, but like, it just became the same thing every day. And I was just like becoming drained. So like, for me, I just had to do art. I was like, I need to do something that's just for me. And I wasn't trying to like sell it. I was just- And had you been painting shit before or was this like a whole new avenue for you? Yeah, like I was always making shit. So like, I would do like a lot of collage painting. Um, I originally first started in like photography. Um, and then that kind of led to like graphic design with photos. And then that kind of led to like collage. And then that led to like 
mixed media painting and then collage and then it just started going full painting. Well, I'd been seeing your shit, I mean, all over LA because you got popping, like you, you, you put in a lot of work doing stencils yep. and like getting up like on sidewalks and yeah. shit. And like still to this day, I think you and I were walking to go get coffee one time. We, we sound, we, yeah. we found one. We um, stepped on one. Yeah. I was basically like, this is pre Instagram, right? So yeah. like for me, I was always inspired by like the graffiti scene, street art scene in LA. And, um, I was just like, I, I remember I met like an artist who was putting a lot of stuff out and I was like, like on the streets and I was, I met them and I was like, yo, your stuff's so dope. Da, da, da. And they were like, you do art? And I was like, yeah, you know, whatever. And then they're like, let me see. It. And I showed it. They're like, you should put this on the street. And that kind of like, like going back to what we were just saying, like someone gave you that. Someone yo, kind of was like, you should dope. put this out. And I was like, you know, I've always liked this shit. I'm going to, I'm going to try and do it. So, um, then I just got addicted. I was like, so t okay. So the first night that yeah. like you decide to go out and put okay. something up, had you graffiti? Like, have that? I so old. <laughs> Did you make graffiti? Are you doing graffiti? Are you Are making you doing graffiti, graffiti here? Yeah. Um, um, so like the first night that like you decide to go and get up, what's going through your head? What do you have with you? And like, you know, is it is it? What's what's going yeah, so, on? So I mean, I would do like I, I would say like so back in the day, like when I lived in Orange County. I would go do like, like wheat paste a bunch of posters, but it was just like, I would print out photos I took. And then like my friends were in bands. And so they would put their like band posters up, you know, like we would just all kind of make shit and put it up, but there was no, like no story to it. It was just like, oh, I'm going to take a photo of you. And then like, I'm going to wheat paste that a few places tonight. And then, um, so I had that taste early on, but this one was like, oh, this is actually like my painting yeah. that I'm going to put up. And so um, I'm trying to think the first night, I can kind of remember, actually, like, I remember the first, like, um, the first, like, box that I hit. Like, I remember, like, being on La Brea, like, right down the street where that 99 cent store is. And I just went, it's, like, off kind of a side street, like, a very, like, easy spot to hit. And then I did it, and I was like, oh. And what'd you put up there? Let's go. It was like this. So, the, I was putting up, like, all the Andy Warhol stencils, right? So, like, I would stencil it on a poster and then make, like, a million copies of those and just paint over them and then blast them everywhere. So um, I was really just kind of putting a thank you tribute to Warhol and then signing it with an X anonymously because I had this corporate job at Universal, like doing the merch for them. And uh, when you work for a corporate company, like anything you do in the public- <laughs> Don't fuck up. <laughs> represents the company. Yeah. So da, 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 you can get fired and blah, blah. And obviously like the illegal stuff. But um, so I, I was just like trying to be anonymous. So I put like an X. So I just said, thank you. And then with an X underneath. And then um, the first night I went, I put like 30 posters up or something like that. And then the next night I went out and put like 30 more posters up. And I was just like, yo, I'm going to Venice. I'm going here. I'm going, and I was just like, I got to go put them everywhere. And then, um, kind of like the art blogs that I was looking at for inspiration at work, uh, like maybe like a week later, were like, oh, thank you X puts a tribute to Warhol up. So and you I start was like, seeing your shit pop up on all of these sites that you follow. On all these sites. And there wasn't a lot of like street art, like blogs back then. So it was kind of like this, like just more like inspiration art sites. And um, so I saw that and I was like, holy shit, this is like, oh, I had no idea that that was going to happen, you know? And then um, that just made me want to do it more, you know? Um, but then they started calling me Thank You X. And so that's how I got my name. I was just trying to, I didn't even like have an idea of when you're reading it. Are you like, no, no, you got it all wrong. Well, I was kind of like, cause it's I was like, <laughs> cause all like, like I would, I had met some like other artists like out in the streets. Like you meet, if you're out at three in the morning, like in the alleys of Melrose and you see like a guy with like a bucket of like paint, wheat paste yeah. and then like guys with spray paint cans, you're like, yo, like, who are you? You know what I mean? That like, kind of thing. And it's like this whole secret world, but then they were all calling me X. And so like everyone would call me X. And then, um, cause I was just signing with an X. And then this, this guy called me like on a blog said like, oh, thank you X. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I guess that's more of a name like than X, you know what I mean? It's like, if you Google X, like what happens, you know? And then, so I was like, okay, I'll, uh, okay, what do I do? I got to buy the website and like do this, you know? Like, <laughs> back then there was no Instagram. So it was like, I had a Flickr account, you know what I mean? And that's how like everyone saw each other's shit was like, they'd go on Flickr and you search like, thank you X or LA street art and you just see different things pop up. That so. might be the coolest way, that, uh, the coolest story to get a name that I've heard. I, yeah, it was kind of funny because I was like, like you said, I was just like, what? What's thank you X? That's not it. And then I was like, huh. Well, I could, that I looks could, really good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, could, I could work with this, you know? But it was funny now, like when people, like when you introduce me as thank you X, it's like, people are like, what? what? What's your name? And I'm like, well, my name is Ryan. 
<laughs> Let's get that clear. So my Give name is government. Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Hello, I'm Ryan. And my artist name is Thank You. You have to like clarify for some people who like don't understand like that world, especially now that I'm like kind of separated from the street art world, but still like adjacent, you know? Um, when you meet someone in like a fine art gallery and they're like, this is Thank You X. And I'm like, hi, how's it going? And like, it, you're telling like a, you know, a 55 year old collector who's like, oh, I'm not familiar with street art. So I have no idea why you would have a moniker. You know what I mean? Wow. Like they don't understand. They know who like Banksy is and that's yeah. it. Um, but yeah. What do you think so hard? Like what's been the hardest thing transitioning, you know, from a street artist to like, you know, a fine art? What would you, what would, from making street art, yeah. you know, that's like free and easily consumed by by a bunch of people to making fine art? Well, I, I would say it's a very hard, it's like very hard transition because you go from this like, uh, it's like this weird thing that's like this illegal thing that's also celebrated by the community. So you can get arrested for it, but like, like moms and dads are stopping to take pictures in front of it because yeah. they like it. So it's like this weird kind of thing. So, and this is like, like I said, like there was no Instagram. There was no like, like no one, no artists were using Facebook because they're like, nah, they're the cops. You know what I mean? Like, oh, shit. Um, and so like we were, that was our Instagram. You know what I mean? Like the streets were our Instagram. So like that was the explore page for us. We mm. just put it out there. And then sometimes like someone would somehow find your email address from like a website or so, you know what I mean? And then, uh, but so that was like, that was very easy to get people's attention. And then um, just from there, it kind of kept growing. But f again, like I, I got stuck in this like routine of making like these stencils and like these kind of like one dimensional things and I, which was amazing at the time, but then kind of hit a wall. Like, you know, like it's, I, I didn't want to be like a one hit wonder, you For know what sure. I mean? And so uh, again, to fulfill my like artist head, I was like, well, I need to like, find out what I'm actually inspired by now. Like years later, like instead of just doing the same thing over and over, like how do I progress and how do I grow as an artist rather than just like, oh, cool. You just want this painting and then like make like 20 paintings over and over, like the same but different. Um, and so I had to grow as an artist and my curator helped me a lot. And he, um, shout out to Roger Gassman. Um, he basically was like, just stop doing it. Just stop making those. And I was like, well, yeah, but like, how, then what? And he's like, figure it out. Like, just stop. He's like, make, do two commissions. Cause at this point, like basically it had been like years of doing it to where I was finally able to like make the jump and quit my job and like, um, save up enough to where I could like kind of risk it, you know? And then he's like, just from, by, just, just from putting your art into the street, starting out as like an illegal project basically. Yeah. Um, which then led to like, you know, some gallery shows, um, a lot of group shows, like a brand kind of would hire me to do a mural at one of their events kind of thing. Um, and yeah, so then from there, he was just like, well, you're doing this Warhol image, you know, that everybody knows you for. Uh, just, and I was like, yeah, I don't want to do it anymore. He's like, then don't. And I was like, well, that's, that's hard. You know, like then what? And he's like, figure it out. Like you just go in the studio, stop taking like requests or stop like, just go silent because Instagram was around. He's like, stop posting on Instagram, go in there and find your craft. Like what's next, what's inspiring you. And so I just started going in and like- What that, did you come out with? Well, that's funny because that's kind of when we re-met. Um, yeah, when I stopped by your came studio. By studio yep. And I was like- um, you, gave, you just were like, hey, you like this? I'm yeah. like, yeah, that's fucking dope. You're like, here you go, take it, get yeah. it out of here. You want to know why? Because <laughs> that was like the style that I was trying to move away from. Wow. And so I was like- um, I was like, if it's in here, then it's, then it's, uh, it's like plaguing it's blocking, you. It's yeah. blocking me. So like, I need to like clear it out. And like, I loved that piece, but I was like, better with you than in here. And so, um, I was like stoked because you were stoked on it. And I was like, great, that's a compliment for me. He likes it, take it, blah, blah, blah. Um, and that's the first piece when you walk into my house, like when yeah. you open up my door, it's literally yeah. like right there. Yeah. For the audience, we'll put it right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. So then I just basically, like experimented and like tried different things and was like figuring it out. And, um, you know, I made a lot of like terrible art, but it was like, the, I was having so much fun with the process that like, I was like, oh, okay, it's like this again. This is that feeling that like, this is like when I used to go on the streets, like I had mm. the like adrenaline and um, I felt good about it again. And so then, um, you know, my curator would come by and like check it out and like kind of give me like, be like, oh, I noticed you're using this. Like, that's kind of cheating a little bit. Uh, 
it's cool, but it's a little cheating, you know. You should try and figure out a way without doing that. And I'm like, okay, fuck. Like, all right. And what would cheating be? Just like it would just be like something like um like uh using like paint markers when you should be using like paint. You know what I mean? Like oh wow. Just that kind of level okay. of like in which no shade to paint markers at all, but it was like these specific lines that I was doing at the time. Like he was like, Yeah, like, you know in 10 years, those lines might fade or whatever, like with, with that marker, you know, like- Damn, so he's giving you like all the years of insight that he's exactly, gained and kind of exactly. opening up this new door for you. Exactly, so like, he's like, this is good right now. See, that would piss me off. Like, oh, that, it did. It, yeah, oh, that Absolutely. must have just drove you crazy because you're like, yo, then you fucking, you fucking paint it. Well, okay, like, it's almost like, I never really had this, but it's like, well, actually I maybe did, but like, it's like having a teacher that you really liked, but that was like hard on you. Yeah. It was like that. And so, um, and he's kind of turned more into like my mentor now for like art stuff. So he basically was like, cool, like this one sucks, make 10 more and they'll start to be good. And I was like, all right. And I was like, just like, like tough love. And, and then I did it. And that's kind of when I started forming like the cube pattern that I was doing and like doing these like abstract cubes with the, you know, the flowers and the bright colors and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how that phase began. And so that's how, that was like my big transition. And I was nervous because, you know, you go in as this like known for one thing mm -hmm. and it's like you with like acting, right? Like, like you're like, oh no, I'm like, I'm an artist, right? Like I, you're a singer and you're an actor. Those are both artists. You know what I mean? But people want to like say like, oh, he's like a, he's a singer or yeah. he's a rapper. He's a music you know, dude. Yeah. Music, whatever. Like, and you're like, well, yeah, but like, that doesn't mean I can't grow and do this and this and this. Um, so I was basically like nervous and like I started kind of like subtly dropping things on my Instagram and then like people were like yo is this you and I was like yeah like you know like nervous yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know only if you like, <laughs> like it. it if it's not then I don't know I don't know how that got posted but um yeah and then I started seeing like the positive feedback and I was like okay like cool you know and then um but I think it was really helpful that I didn't like post a lot during that time because I didn't post like the the like process of getting there mm. i have it all like i filmed it and stuff just to like for me but like it was important to like perfect not i don't want to say perfect because nothing i do is perfect but like like get it to where i wanted it to be you know what i mean before i started like showing it definitely it's like it's like playing a demo for your audience and you're like well trust me it'll get there oh yeah I, oh that's scary you know that that's really yeah, scary yeah exactly so yeah that was like so my big when, transition. So, you know, when you come up with like your, you know, your like infamous cube design, you mm -hmm. first looked at it, like what goes through your head? Well, it's like, um, have, have you seen like Minority Report? Yeah. You know how they're like, how like Tom Cruise is like, like moving his hands and like things are just flying in the uh -huh. air. That's like how I feel how it works out. Like, cause I have like, it's, it's like, you know, it's like uh, stolen advertisements from the street is like the base of it. Right. And then there's like layers of resin and then there's paint on top of it and there's layers of resin and there's like more paint and stuff. So like, it's like this, uh, there's different phases of it. There's like the very free, like free go, like just like release. And then there's like the, okay, now like there's a more like mathematical side where you're like, this has to be here, this has to be here, this has to be here. And then it's like, it's just like different layers of like uh, the process of, I guess, like it's freedom. And then it's like, like, controlled and then it's freedom and then it's controlled. And so it's like every layer is different. Um, and I think they like balance each other out like that. Have you ever been arrested going to get like those advertisements? Cause like you literally go to like La Brea Boulevard yeah. and like Melrose and like rip the posters that, you know, yeah. companies paid right. to have put up there. Has anyone given you shit? Uh, like sometimes, like I've never been arrested for doing it, but people have like yelled at me. Like, like if it's on the side of a building or whatever, you know, but it's like, the beauty of it is- um, What does your car look like? Do you just like pull up and just grab like pounds dude. of, like, ta like take me through okay. that process. So my car is like, people get in my car and they're like, oh, okay, you're like one of these kind of guys. Like you're like- <laughs> You're like a real deal artist. <laughs> you yeah. Oh, everywhere. Oh, you're, oh, you're an artist. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, but I'm like the artist who like, you know when you were a kid and you like are supposed to clean your room and just put everything in the closet? That's like my like trunk. Okay. So like- You'll get in and it'll be like, oh, okay, this looks pretty nice. And then you like go open the trunk and like shit, like paint cans are falling out. Wow. So, um, so I would just roll up to these things and just kind of do it in broad daylight because um, it just like do it in plain sight and then it looks less obvious. Dude, you know, uh, you know if, 
anyone listening, you want to get into a fucking concert, act like you know that you're, sp- if you, if anyone's listening and wants to go backstage to a fucking show, all right, unless it's like some huge thing and you need credentials yeah. and all that shit. If you're at like a fucking, you know, a little cool hometown show and you want to go backstage, walk back there like you are supposed to. Yeah. Walk in there like you own the motherfucker and no one's going to stop you. 100%. 100%. I remember like back in like 2008, if you had a backpack, you could walk into a club and be like, oh, I'm the DJ. Wow. You get into anywhere. And really? Like, yeah. The bouncers are like, okay, he has a backpack. <laughs> Who's going to go don't to the open, They don't even open the backpack. They're just like, you know, <laughs> that was a fun era. Uh, now everyone's like, I'm a DJ and they don't let them in the club. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. Can't go. I'm a DJ. They just hold up a USB stick. Yeah. I'm a DJ. Oh yeah. my God. Um, but yeah, so that that's like, my, I just roll up and steal this stuff. And What's then, been the weirdest thing that you found like digging through the trash to like get the, you know, to get the shit? Um, well, it's never like digging through the trash. It's always like just pulling it straight from straight the wall. From the wall? Straight so from the wall? So you don't even wait till they take it off. No, sometimes like, I'll, sometimes I'll see the guys like removing it like to put the new one up and I just roll up. I'm like, yo, you guys throwing this away? And they're like, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yeah, can I take it? And they're like, sure, you peasant. Like, you know what I mean? I'm just like, all right. But like, then I rip it up and it'll be like a Mission Impossible poster and I'll like rip it up and like flip it backwards. And then it's like, okay, cool. Like this huge corporation just funded my art piece now, you know? And so it's like my way of like- It's like anti-establishment. Yeah, it's like yeah. taking an ad and turning it into art, you know? Um, and it's by no way like that mentality is not like a new thing. It's just that that's my way of doing it. Um, but yeah. Uh, so the I would, not like the weirdest thing, but like one of the funniest, like most coincidental thing was like, I, I stole like um, that show Scream Queens. Okay. I, I was like stealing all those posters because they were like really good, like- content posters. I was like, oh, there's like, there's like girls with, we can use the eyes and all these things. I was just like envisioning it in my head when, while I was like taking it. And then, uh, you know, you just see like us, like a, like a part of like the S in the, in the logo. And this guy comes to my show and, um, he's like, I'm really interested in this piece. And I was like, oh, cool. And I was like, explain the process. And I was like, oh yeah, it's like some like, you know, like this poster and this poster and like some like some music festival and Scream Queens. He's like, really? Scream Queens? And then he bought it because he represented uh, the writers of Scream Queens. And he's like, I knew I felt something with this piece. And so he bought the piece. And I was like, so he wrote the show, or, or sorry, he represented the people who wrote the show. They're, someone else paid someone to promote it. I stole it. And then I got paid. You know what I mean? So it was like this funny, like weird circle of life. And now it's like in his office, you know? Wow. So that was like a very like lucky, lucky coincidence that he like bought that piece because of that. Well, you have some pretty incredible collectors too. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I know the chain smokers are collectors of your work. How did you meet them? Um, uh, Their manager happened to come to a show I was doing in New York. And um, then I get like put on an email being like, hey, like, Meet Drew. I think he'd really like your art. And then Drew came by the studio, and um, it was funny because he came by the studio, and there was no art there because I was still having my show in New York. So <laughs> he shows up. He's like, uh, "What's yeah?" Up, he dude? came here, and he was funny. He was like on crutches at the time too. He had like broke his foot or something like that, and he's on crutches. And I was like, "Yeah, so there's nothing here right now because it's all in New York." So I had to like show it to him on my computer, which I could have just emailed to him, but he wanted to like come see the studio and stuff like that. And then. Um, and then he was just like, oh, what's, what's up with this piece? And I was like, that one actually sold. And then he's like, well, let's make a bigger one like it. And I was like, let's go. So um, yeah, then uh, what's funny is then like when I was doing the more abstract kind of stuff, uh, like growing from the, the cube pattern, he's one of the guys who like DM'd me. is like, yo, is this you? Did you make this? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, can I buy it? I'm like, yes. You know, so like that was a great thing. So he has like, he has like three pieces of mine now and like over different phases, which is cool. That's crazy. Yeah, I want to say I saw uh, you dropped off some some paintings for Zed. Yep, Zed got come some. About? Zed's probably like maybe one of my. He has like five pieces of mine. Or I four, four pieces of mine. I think I've seen a bunch of photos yeah. from his house. He was a he, funny story. He's the first person to buy a cube painting. Wow. Yeah. And so, how did you guys link up? Um, so my best friend has been his tour manager for like years. And so um, I met him when he was just like this like scrawny little DJ kid, like playing like house parties at South by Southwest. Um, but I but I really liked the stuff he was making. And I was like, oh yeah, this kid's dope. I remember, I've heard of him. And then, um, yeah, like I never really, I never like told him I was an artist. You know, I, I never like tried to push that on him. And then, um, and then 
his tour manager hit me up one day. He's like, hey, like Zed bought a house and like he he wants you to make something for him. And he like looked at your Instagram and liked this piece and da da da. da. And I was like, cool, fuck, I, okay, cool. So then um, again, like over the years, he's he's got like Q paintings. He's got the abstract stuff. He has this huge abstract piece. Did you see the Lego thing that he bought? Yeah, where there's like Legos inside of his fucking wall. Yeah, that is insane. So like that video went viral. That artist made like the nightclub inside of his wall yeah. with the Legos. In the back of that video is one of my big paintings. And I was like, well, damn, like I'm not getting tired. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> that thing was like everywhere. Um, but yeah, my painting is in the back of that. So go check it out. Shout, yeah. shout out to <laughs> Zed. <laughs> shout out to Zed's yeah. house. Um, yeah, I, my my best collector ever though is hands down Paul McCartney. What? Uh, Paul McCartney, I did a painting for him uh, early days when I was doing like a lot of street art, like uh, more portrait stuff. And his manager wanted a portrait of him when he was like younger, like Beatles era. And so I did this one and sent it to them. I actually made two of the exact same. I was like making two at the same time so that I could keep one and be like, oh, Paul McCartney, Paul McCartney has, has yeah, the other yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, um, cause I never kept my own art. I just like never had, but that's the one that I kept. And then um, they ended up liking it so much that they turned it into the tour like lithograph that you could buy. So it's like signed by me and him. And it was like, you could buy it on the tour. Whoa. Yeah. And so, I mean, you guys obviously met. Yeah. What was that like? Uh, insane. Like, it's like one of those things where like you meet him and you're like trying to keep it cool. And then you walk to your car and you just freak <laughs> out. And you're like, holy shit, that was so gnarly. And then I call my dad and my dad was like equally stoked and mad at me, like jealous. You know uh. what I mean? He's just like, I met his hero. You know That's, what I mean? So I was going to say, Paul McCartney, is, Paul, Paul McCartney is like the one dude where like your parents will just think you're you're the coolest. You could yeah. be like, yo, dad, you know, I painted this thing for the chain smokers or, you know, Lil Pump. Yeah. And, and they'd he, be like, he, what? He goes, they should stop smoking. Right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <doesn't> no, yeah. <laughs> but that's the one where you can kind of like boast and flex. Well, you know? a lot of times like parents don't understand what we actually do. Exactly. And so like you had like, that's a thing where you're like, dad, I sold an <laughs> art piece to Paul, Paul McCartney. McCartney. And he's like, Oh, I understand what that means. Yeah. yeah. Um, Something registers. Yeah. yeah. But I ran into him like last year at Soho House and um, I was with another collector. This is like the best story ever. I was with another collector and Paul McCartney runs up to me and like, is like, hey, how are you? Love the Oh office. my God. And I was just like, oh my God. Because, oh, the dude first goes, oh shit, Paul McCartney's over there. <laughs> and I like turn around, look, and then we like make eye contact. I was like, hey, what's up, Paul? He's like, hey, how are you? <laughs> And the dude was just like shook. It was like our first time hanging. He was like, gonna buy a piece, like whatever. And then um, and then that, it was just like rad. And I was just like, oh yeah, like I did an art piece for him. He's like, just like that, casual. Like, you're, oh, you just did an art piece for Paul. I was like, yeah, you know, like it's cool. Cause it was like, like years before that. And then uh, as he's leaving, he came back by and like, was like, good to see you, man. And it was like right before um, that, like, uh, like dad cella, like, festival that they were doing where it was like the Rolling Stones and Palmer, yeah, like yeah, that big like yeah. festival. And then um, he was like, so what do you have? Like you have an art show coming up? And I was like, yeah, I'm doing this thing. He's like, all right, well, good luck. And I was like, hey man, good luck to you too. At the festival. I was like, why did I just say good luck to Paul McCartney? <laughs> like a these fucking beetle. Like I'm telling him like, hey, you, you got something, you'll make it, you know? But yeah, that was like the best story for me. Like that, that dude, that he came up to me and was like impressed, basically like, validated me in front of this collector. So that's like it. when you're out, you know, with like your girlfriend or something and, and someone's super fucking cool is like, yo, this is a great guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you just yeah. leave like, yeah. Yeah. And they're lying usually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's ad time. Today's episode of the podcast is sponsored by Native. Take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. At Native, they create safe, simple, effective products that people use in the bathroom every day. They create products with trusted ingredients and trusted performance. Not convinced? You can check out the 7,000 five-star reviews from their customers. Uh, their product is formulated without aluminum, parabens, and talc. It's filled with ingredients found in nature, such as coconut oil, uh, shea butter, tapioca starch, which absorbs wetness. It's made in the USA with ingredients thoughtfully sourced from around the world. No animal testing, free shipping, and returns. Best of all, it works. Uh, don't hold back. Native can hang with your workout, busy mom life, or just 16-hour workday. Test it out. Tell 
Tell us how it worked for you and why it's so important for you to use a deodorant that's made with clean ingredients. Uh, people also love them. They have over 7,000 five-star reviews. You can check them out in uh, the Today Show, Women's Health, L, Good Morning America, Pop Sugar, Nylon, Hello Giggles, and more. Uh, and it's it's worth it. Aluminum may be linked to some serious health ramifications, including breast cancer and Alzheimer's. Although Native is priced at a slight premium, when compared to conventional deodorants, it is safe and effective. Effective. There's no risk to try. They offer free returns and exchanges in the USA. Um, and, you know, I ordered the eucalyptus and mint. It smells amazing. I've been needing a nice deodorant. I've been getting a lot more, uh, a lot more, I want to say, ethical with the way I source my personal, uh, you know, hygiene. Uh, I don't use uh, certain, you know, toothpaste. Uh, I don't use, you know, certain deodorants now or body washes. So, uh, I'm getting just, you know, a little, little, little bit smarter up there. For 20% off your first purchase, visit nativedeodorant.com and use promo code ADHD during checkout. Once again, for 20% off your purchase, visit nativedeodorant.com and use my promo code ADHD during checkout. Boom. And Ryan, uh, you know, you're vegan. So yeah. I was making fun. I had Madeleine on for Valentine's Day and uh, I just started talking a bunch of shit. And Wait, because so, you're not vegan, right? I'm like 80% vegan. Got it. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm 80% vegan. I, I, I like, I had Crossroads right before I came to do this podcast tonight. Okay, what'd you but, get? But uh, I got uh, the spicy meatball pizza. So good. Um, that's the, that's my favorite restaurant in LA. Crossroads? Yeah, hell yeah. And then I get the, the kale salad. Mm. Um, yep. Classic. It's just like a lump. And it looks like you're like, is this going to be good? And you're like, oh my God, this is so good. They spelled it uh, C-A-L-E today. So I was like, damn, this is a new a new type of kale. Okay. Kale, kale, kale. Hmm. Um, and then, you know what else, dude? There's this restaurant Pura Vida out here. That's, What's that? I don't even like, know that one. What? I don't know it. Oh, bro. How are you Am vegan? I failing? Yo, you're I- failing. It's completely vegan. Oh, shit. Am I out of the club now? No. Uh, and they got amazing pastas. It's Yo, if you love Crossroads, check this it out. This is not a plug, by the way. Definitely, not- ad time is over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that shit ended with the native read. Yo, you know what I'm going to start doing? I'm, I'm going to go on podcast as a guest and just have my own, like, sponsor. Yeah. And I'm just going to start coming in and be like, yo, this, uh, just so you know, this is uh, sponsored by Kale, and we are coming <laughs> yeah. here. Uh, use a promo code. Uh, Kale. <laughs> thank you, X, yeah. for yeah, kale.com. Um, and just get paid, like, on the side. Yeah, I mean, I kind of do that with my merch store. So, yeah. uh, hey, if you guys are listening, fanjoy.co slash ADHD. Go get some merch. Let's uh, go. Yeah, before it's gone yeah. forever. Well, d- what's up with my merch? Do, do I get any? Dude, gonna yeah, I'm going to send you I'm gonna send you a full sweatsuit. We okay. got them on the site. They're Dude. going fast. Uh, I don't. Do you drink a lot of coffee? I do. Okay, cool. I'll send you, uh, I'll send you some coffee mugs. Let's go. This has been probably like the best, uh, the best investment for me, coffee mugs, because, you know, it's something I use every day. Yeah. And I drink a shit ton of coffee, so why not, you know, have my own? I, I had an espresso before we started podcasting. Exactly. And I'll send um, you, a, I'll send you a phone case too. Ooh. You know? Yeah. Just got it all covered Let's here, Let's go, man. dude. You know? Yeah. Let's fanjoy.co. Go. It's cool, because it looks like it's, I guess, sorry. No. It looks like it's like a, like the college, you know what I mean? Like you should start, it's like a, I started my own frat. Yeah. This like is a, uh, this is like a soror frat. Sigma alpha. It can not be like, ex- it cannot be like exclusive to dudes though, because we have a lot of, a lot of females that listen to this pod. It's a fraternity. Um, a frat- I like that. Yeah. Welcome to the fraternity guys. <laughs> Welcome to the fraternity. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Uh, the frat- what did you call it? Frat- fraternity. Fraternity. Yeah. Damn. Well, uh, hey, you know, let me know if you're pledging. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to run with this shit, you dude. Should. You just started a whole fucking problem. Okay, just let the viewers know I get 10%. <laughs> um, so, dude, I mean, you have Paul McCartney as one of your- cl- Yo, you just did that dope-ass collab, though, with Adidas. Yeah. Uh, and, and anyone listening right now, if they're in Los Angeles, they can actually go on Melrose right now, walk in and see your uh, yeah. you know, in the store. Tell me about that. Um, yeah, so it's actually at the Shoe Palace on Melrose. It's like the flagship store. Um, it's like one of the big stores where Adidas basically has their own store within. The it's store. a store within it's a, a store. store within a store. Like Nike has a section, Adidas has a section, then then like the rest of it. Um, but yeah, it was sick. Uh, it took a couple of days. It, like when you're painting a, at a store like that, it's it's hard because you have to paint overnight. So it's like graveyard shift. So they close at nine, and then I then I come in and I paint to like. Five. Are you completely alone? No, I had um, like an assistant, and then like I'm, I bring a video guy everywhere usually. Um, Your video so, guy's uh, very Caesar, nice. Yeah, 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 he's very nice. He's a very nice. He's guy. like a very. I, he's like he's too nice and too like polite. <laughs> Why do you say that? He's just like a. He's just like a. He quiet, just needs to say fuck off sometimes. He's just like a quiet kid. Okay. And so like I always love to just like fuck with them and just like 
you know what I mean? Like try and push him a little bit more like out of his comfort zone. Um, he's a great kid, but yeah, he, uh, he comes with me like to those things. And then, um, and so I basically like, even if he wasn't, he's like a good kid that even if he wasn't filming, he's just like down to hang. He's good and, like, to have he's around. He's just good to have around. Yeah, he's good vibe. Good he's like, yeah. So um, for that, I had uh, a couple assistants for that. And um, then there was like, they did inventory that night as well. So like the employees are there, but they're in the other section. So it was kind of crazy. I actually broke a light with uh, the- In the store? Lift. Yeah, with the scissor lift and it hasn't been replaced. And I was so worried. I was like, oh my God, am I gonna have to pay for this? Like. <laughs> And then I was like, oh yeah, I have insurance, so I should be good. But, and I just never, I- You're I, like the nicest artist ever. <laughs> You're so considerate. <laughs> well, like if you think about like on paper, I'm probably like the most boring person. It's like, I don't do drugs. I don't, I, I'm like straight edge. I like, I'm vegan. You know what I mean? Like I'm um, married. Like I just like have this like thing where it's like, God, that guy sounds very boring. You know, like, <laughs> but I'm actually doing like, fun stuff. I You're think. out till like I, seven I, in the morning. I'm the cool dad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm like the, Hey, no, I'm cool. Um, but yeah, I'm going doing, you watch Vanderpump rules, dude. Yeah. Let's talk about Vanderpump rules. Let's do it. All right. So I know you don't watch it. I don't, but I did Sheena's podcast. Yeah. Sheena, What's her last name? Uh, it, it was Shay when she was okay, married. Sheena not, Shay. Sheena Shay. I don't know what it is now. I'm sorry. She's great. Uh, she has a podcast called uh, Shenanigans. Okay. Uh, you know, play on the name. Yeah, love it. Uh, and she was kind enough to invite me on and I went on for an episode and it was great. She, she was awesome. Sheena, if you're listening, get me on that show. I'm a fan. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. It's like, I basically, I hated all reality shows. I was like, that's that stuff's trash. Like these people are terrible, blah, blah, blah. I was like, hated like Bravo, like anything like that. And then uh, Eden would be like watching it, my wife, Eden. And um, I would be like working on the computer. I'd just be like, this is so terrible. Like, what are you watching? And she's like, it's good, shut up. And then like the next week I'd be watching like same thing. And I'd be like looking kind of like, wait, God, that, oh, that person's terrible. You start getting invested And slow. then like the, the <laughs> next week I'm like, wait, she's dating him no. now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, and then the next week I'm just shutting my computer and I'm like, Oh my God, like this is so good. Eden's and it, like, honey, what do you, and you're like, shh, like, Vanderpump's yeah. on. You're late, her. <laughs> no, but dude, honestly, like just as someone, like I highly suggest watching something like this or having a thing, just an escape of some sort because you have stressful days. Like we all do have stressful days, right? We're, we're artists, we're fucking crazy. We have ADHD. You know what I mean? Like we're, yep. our minds are, are, constantly like a battlefield for real. And obviously we love our lives and we like wouldn't trade it, but it's not like all just like, you know, grassy hills and fun, la la. It's like, it's it's in our head, it's a battlefield a lot of times. So for me, I have trouble like falling asleep and like, I just start thinking about things and like, oh, I need to do this. Oh, like blah, blah, blah. Like, did I email that person? Dude, you know, just it, literally it, right before you pass out. Right before you pass yeah. out. And it's like, what, like I'm the crazy person who's like replying to an email at 4 a.m. because I'm like, I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to like uh, reply to that guy. Is he not gonna buy an art piece now? Oh, you know, whatever. So, um, and then I look like an, a weirdo. Like they're like, oh, that's weird. Like, <laughs> why are you up at 3 a.m.? Yeah, why are you up at 4 a.m., you crazy person? <laughs> but so like then I started, like once I started like watching these shows, I was like out. Cause it, it allows you to escape. And mm. you're just like, you turn your brain off and you're just like, okay. Uh, you know what I mean? And it's like, it just becomes like, like you turn off, you know what I mean? Vanderpump so, Rules is like your Ambien. A hundred percent. Yeah. No joke. Cause I like, I don't take that yeah. kind of stuff. So it's like, like that's my, that's like my, my melatonin or whatever, you know what I mean? Like my Ambien. So. Where did that decision come from to be straight edge? Um, well, early on, like as a teenager, I basically was like dabbling with like drinking. I started like smoking and drinking at like 12 and one of my Damn, kids, 12? Yeah, like it was like one of those things where like I lived in like suburbia, like yeah. Huntington Beach, like um like as a kid there's like it wasn't like a lot going on. Like during the day you go to the beach, at night it's like whatever. So it's very kind of like sleepy town at the time. Um now that technology and things like it's a little probably better, but um my neighborhood friends older brother was like in high school and he was like, we thought he was like this cool guy, whatever. And he would like get us into like drinking and like- He's smoking. giving 12 year olds alcohol. A hundred percent. Like yeah. think about it now. <laughs> yeah, it's, you're like, oh, it's this fun. guy is an actual criminal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're like, oh, he's a terrible person. Um, and he would like, he had a fake ID. And so he would buy us alcohol. So he was like 16 and we were 12. 
And so he was giving it, whatever. It was like a whole thing, but like he got us into like, we thought it was like rad and whatever. And then um, like in my family, I had a lot of uh, history of like alcoholism, like Same with me, drug yeah. addiction. Like, so my, like some of my family members were like in and out of rehab and like mm -hmm. whatever. So, um, but I was like a little punk rocker. I was like, I was like straight up like this like kind of like gutter punk kind of kid. Like I would go and um, just like, I would literally, I was drinking at school. Like I had like a water bottle filled with Bacardi in math class in, in like freshman year. And I'd just be like wasted. And um, it was just like, it, when it, when you, I think when you do something so heavy, so young, it kind of like put it, it able, it's allows you to like, to know that you need to stop kind of like I did. It well, you're fast. almost like, you're almost like, I'm not missing out on anything. Yeah. I don't, it, it's that, but it's also just like, oh shit. Like, what am I doing? This is mm. fucking crazy. Like I was like, like I literally like smoked meth one time and I was just like, okay, like that probably was too far. Like let's, let's dial it back. You know? And so like, but I'm the kind of personality that like, like I'm doing something, it's like I'm going. You're you know all I mean? or nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's like, and it's not like I'm trying to be cool or whatever. Like I was like, I mean, I, at the time I was probably trying to be cool, but then also like, it just became like, okay, I'm smoking weed and then I'm drinking and then I'm like doing mushrooms and then I'm doing acid and then I'm, and I was just like a fucking crazy, like I was always high, always doing something. Like I would do like, like anything. Like I would like huff something, you know what I mean? Like I, no joke, I was like 15 like huffing something. And then I was just like, I remember I had this moment where I was just like, oh shit. Like, I I think I've, I think this is not- You've crossed the line. I've crossed, this is like, yeah. I, where, where am I? You know what I mean? And I was like, basically like, I remember like being somewhere and sitting next to the people around me and being like, I don't even like these people. The only reason I'm with these people is because we're doing a drug together. Mm. And that's like, uh, for me, like I was like, you take that drug away and like, I have nothing, nothing in, common. in common with And them. it's not even yeah. like a thing where it's like, oh, like my best friend. It was just like, I mean, I guess he's my best. These are my best friends because, you know, I left all my real friends to like hang out with these guys because they're also drug addicts, you know? And uh, I just kind of like, I knew this one kid who was straight edge, who was always really nice to me. And um, we like, we were like, his, his older brother was like friends with my older brother, something like that. And so, um, I remember being like, okay, like I don't want to end up like some of my family members. So I'm just going to stop all this. And I was lucky enough to like, just be able to like, like pull the parachute and just like, like boom, like Not I'm out. going to treatment. I didn't have to go to treatment. And, yeah. and it was like, I, I was just doing it because I wanted to. And it wasn't like I like needed to, I just like really wanted to. And so um, I basically just started, I was like, the only way I can do this is if I just like bail these dudes that I'm hanging with go hang out with that kid that I knew that was straight edge. I didn't even know what straight edge was. I just knew that he didn't do anything. And he would like go to like punk hardcore shows. And I was like, okay, I'm going to just hang with this kid for a little bit. And then he started taking me to shows. And then like, I went to like a hardcore show at Showcase Theater. And I was like- Yo, shout out to Showcase, dude, man. shout out to Showcase. Did you see the documentary that they I put out? Actually, no, because where can you stream it? How do you see it? Just it's on go YouTube? on uh, Vimeo. Yeah. Okay, I got to check it out because everyone's talking about it. I mean, that's how I met. Like, I want to say, you know, all, I mean, all my closest friends that I'm still friends with today, uh, I've seen, you know, all my first shows were at Showcase. Yeah. The first shows that I played, you yeah. know, Battle of the Bands. Same, dude. Uh, yeah. And, you know, sold tickets like yep. to, to get up there. Yep. Uh, like my first fights, like yeah. everything. Yeah, like your friends, your crew. The Del Taco down the street. A hundred percent, dude. Um, the drive through line would be like, it's so long. 50 like, fucking yeah. cars. And then you would go and you'd like try and hop, like you'd run. I'd try to leave the show early so I could get. <laughs> no, what we would do is we would go, we would park and then go like find like girls in line and then just like be like, hey, what's up girls? And like, can we come in with you in order? And like, we would like, we were poor. We tried to get them to buy us food. Oh my God. But, um, but yeah, so I started hanging out with this kid and I was like, he kind of opened up this whole world of like, these kids were doing like, uh, like the funnest stuff ever. They were like, like sneaking into like, water parks and like, uh, like just like going to shows and like be, just being active instead of like, I, at the kids I was hanging out with were like, we were hanging out at like my friend's house in their garage because their parents were like, just not around kind yeah. of thing, you know? So I was like, just like immediately like had this like aha moment of like, oh, I need to switch this up. And uh, yeah, that kid like basically- Are you guys kinda, still friends? Yeah, yeah. That's he was awesome. like, um, we don't like hang out as much anymore. He actually, it's so funny. Like he's dope. He, um, he's, he has like, he's full family life. He has like two kids. And like, so he's just like wrapped up in that world now. But, um, 
So yeah, he was like the kid that kind of brought me into that. And then I was still not, like I wasn't one of those guys that like one day I was doing something and then the next day I was like, that's it, I'm straight edge. Like I was just like, I just hung out like adjacent to that crew for a long time. And then, you know, after like maybe like a year, I was like, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm going to be straight edge. Like this is for me. And so, um, and I'm not like one of those preachy straight edge kids. Like obviously like you smoke and stuff and like, I support that and smoke like- Smoke weed, not cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just Dude, to be clear. No one- Which by the way, I no smoke one cigarettes for, I smoke cigarettes for 10 years. And then lo- let me look at my little app because yeah. I'll tell you, I have this Like app. no one should really smoke cigarettes. No. Like I support, if you want to do whatever you want to do, that's cool. Cigarettes is the worst thing. So I have this app called My Last Cigarette and um, it, it actually, it really, it really helps. I've been a non-smoker for three years, 63 days, six hours, and 15 minutes. And doesn't that feel good to say that? It feels amazing. That's and awesome. I've saved, check this out. This Here's what's oh. cool too. I've saved $8,513. Dude, how, you know what I don't get? Like how people afford to smoke. Dude, it's crazy. It's like, it's literally, it's ex- <laughs> and the worst is like when I used to go to like New York and stuff on tour because cigarettes out here would, I don't even know what they are anymore, but they, I mean- back, I think they got like, like crazy expensive It'd be like though. seven or eight bucks for a pack. Yeah. And then I'd go to New York and be like $14. Oh my God. And I'd be like, what? <laughs> It's crazy. What? Yeah, and but, now now we're spending money on like juices. Yeah, like <laughs> we're literally spending, cold press yeah. juice and, and iced coffee. Yeah. yeah, now we're poor because we spend too much money on juice. Avocado yeah. toast. Yeah, God. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just, I look back at myself then and I just, I can't even like relate. And I'm just like, I don't even know. Like, and sometimes I'll have dreams. I'll have dreams where I, I'm smoking cigarette and I'll wake up in the morning and I'll feel like I did the worst thing ever. I'm like, no. Yeah. I'm like, oh shit. And they'll wake up and be like, okay, oh, oh, it's, it's a just dream. a dream. Yeah. Just a dream. Yeah. Uh, some people have like real things to like, you know what I mean? Like real things to worry about. And we wake up and we're like, oh my God, I had a dream. I smoked so a cigarette. cigarette. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, that changed my life. And it's it's just one of those things where I, I, I saw, like I had this like moment I saw, I was like, I need to get out of this. I need to change. And then um, now it's like people, cause I, I only drank illegally like underage. So like, I've never- you never had a drink when you're 21. I've never like bought, I, I okay. Or gone on like a bar. I bought a drink. When I turned 21, I was on tour. I was like doing merch for a band on tour. And it was like a straight edge hardcore band. And um, I remember we went to the gas station on my 21st birthday in like North Carolina. And I was like, well, I'm going to buy a beer. Cause like, I don't know, like if you don't drink, there's like no positive thing about turning 21, unless you go to like Vegas or something. But I was like, well, I'll buy a beer for someone. And so I just, like, I bought a beer, like probably like the worst, like, two dollar like <laughs> crappy beer ever and i like remember giving it to like someone that worked at the venue and they were just like oh thanks like they were like i was like it's like as <laughs> you're this kid who like doesn't know anything about drinking and then i i was like oh i'm gonna do something nice so i'm gonna buy a beer because i can because i'm 21 <laughs> it's you almost know? like an insult they yeah and they're like, like cool insulted. this is literally trash <laughs> beer yeah yeah i didn't even go i didn't want to like spend for like the good stuff but um yeah i don't know it's weird because then i was like I DJed for a long time. And then, so I was like in nightlife and stuff like that and doing art as well. So it's like, it's kind of like a weird, people are always like shocked. They're like, wait, you don't do, but you're an artist and like you were DJing. And so like, cause it's like very, you know, a lot of artists do drugs and drink. Do you mean and, you're not troubled and have all these issues? No, I am. I just don't have an escape <laughs> anymore. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have nothing. The, my escape is is now Vanderbump. So, you know what I mean? Vanderbump That's, rules. Yeah, yeah. So, Sheena, we really yeah. need you to call us. Sheena, can you call a dial in right yeah. now? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Damn, man. Yeah. I mean, that's so like, you know, when you got married, yep. did you guys have alcohol at the wedding? Yeah, of course. Like I'm not anti-alcohol, right? Like I, like in- Did you have a non-vegan menu? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we did both. Cause I- I'm You're just very like, understanding. I'm not a preachy guy. Yeah, you're like, very there's, understanding. There's like a few things I preach about, right? Like I, I preach against people that are like abusing women. Of like course. I'll never like, I'll, there's no like- Fuck gra- that. There's no gray area for that, nope. you know? Um, things like that, right? Like the, if you're doing, if you're an, if you're, if you're doing bad things, then I don't fuck with you, right? But if you're like, like if you want to smoke weed, like dude, you should smoke weed if you want to. Like that's your thing, like whatever. And like also like, like with the whole like cannabis movement, H, uh, or CBD, like CBD, yeah. um, there's like tons of positive things from it, right? Dude, I I actually, you know, I bought uh some CBD over the weekend, uh this this oil yeah. and uh it's been helping me sleep so yeah fucking much. And, and like, like yeah, like you know, eating drinks and like not a lot, but she'll have like like a glass of wine or two like here and there. But um I just say like I became straight for me. Like it's it's a personal choice. And it should I think that anything you do 
is a personal choice, right? Like, and obviously you can like, if someone asks, you can be like, well, here's the reasons why I did it, right? And if someone's like, well, should I? Like, you know, then you, that's a different story. But I'm never like the kind of person who's like, well, dude, you should be straight edge. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you, you're a bad person because you drink. You know what I mean? Like, and that kind of has, obviously like people, like straight edge, no one even knows what straight edge is anymore. Like, it's not like a popular thing, but um, like back in the day, people would be like, oh, so you just hate people that drink? And For I'm everyone like, listening, do you want to explain what it is? So straight edge is basically making a lifetime commitment to be drug, alcohol, and tobacco free. And that's it. A lot of people think that there has like a promiscuous sex thing tied to it, but it's not. It's just those three things and that's it. And so, um, yeah, it's- I felt like the really militant dudes though were like no promiscuous sex. Sure, like some of them are, but it has nothing to do with the title straight edge. Got it, okay. So like, it's like how a lot of them were also vegan, but that also, it's just because it was like happened to- be in line with the culture or whatever. But, um, you know, like I wasn't vegan for a long time, but I was straight edge. And um, yeah, so, and you know what? It's like one of those things where like, I'm sure there's just different people saying different things and different levels and different meanings for each person. But um, yeah, so for me, it, it was more about like the community that it was, the hardcore punk rock scene, like very like do it yourself um, mentality. And like, just like that kind of, that kind of thing was very impactful for me. And that was like the big part of being straight for me um, where like, I didn't need anything else. Mm. And so now like, I, it's not like, I, I don't, I never like think like, oh, I wish I had a drink. I, I've never like, like thought that. Like, like had second thoughts. Yeah, exactly. Never. Like, you know what I mean? I was never like, well, maybe I'll do it. It's like, I'm just like, I don't even think, honestly, it doesn't even cross my mind. Yeah. Like, I just, like, I don't think, I mean, yeah, dude, it shouldn't because I mean, you're obviously fucking killing it. You know, you, you obviously you. have an incredible life. Thank you. Um, and you know, you've made those, those decisions early on and made those adjustments to, you know, not have these problems now. Right. Well, it's like driving two different cars, right? Like you drive one car, I drive one car. I don't think on a daily basis, like, oh, like what if I drove that car? It's just like, oh no, I'm just, this is the car I drive. Like, you know, like, and so that's how I, I'm just, this is how it is. Is I just don't do anything. I'm, I'm straight edge. I don't, I'm sober, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, um, I'm never thinking about it. Speaking about cars that we drive, would you ever yeah. get a Tesla? Dude, that's like, uh, of course. I actually, I sold a piece to a person who is an oh, inventor. Shit. Okay. And that's all I can say about that. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. But I love Teslas. Oh, and shit. So I, I love Teslas. So, um, okay. So I, I did sign a non disclosure. Yeah. Uh, so I can't tell you who that person was, but I love Teslas. I hope I can uh, go to space one day with the SpaceX. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like I feel like uh, like their last name might rhyme with like Dusk or yeah. something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's you cool. Know what I mean? That's a cool sentence Mr. that you said. Dusk. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool um, statement. Yeah, um, <laughs> damn, but dude, yes, I love, you should just get a Tesla off that. I love Tesla. Um, so what sucks is I, I've always wanted Tesla. When I was looking to get a car. Um, I was like looking to lease a car. I couldn't get a Tesla because uh, the apartment I was living in had no hookups. Couldn't charge it though. Couldn't charge it. And I also didn't have a parking spot. So I was like, I'm not going to park in like, like Hollywood on the street. You know what I mean? And uh, so then I, so I'm currently in a lease, but I am 100% planning on getting one. Like, Whenever the you? NDA clears cl yeah. up and you yeah, can we'll make see. that phone call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what about you? I really, I really want. I'm, I'm, I'm car shopping right now, so yeah. uh, I'm just looking at a bunch of options. But I really want the Model X, dude. It's so. I mean, and, but you thank know, you X Model X, together. exactly, right? Yeah. And I, but I know that uh, you've done some things with SpaceX, and so I wanted to pick your brain and, yeah. uh, you know, see that. I mean, I love. I'm obsessed with space. Like, um, like, can we talk about what you did with SpaceX? Um, about the painting and stuff, or no? Well, that's what. Okay, that's the thing I can't talk Got about. It. Yeah, yep. yeah. So right. I don't. I. I what was, so thanks, I, man. Thanks for ruining my whole. My, yeah. I, I quit. I quit this I, whole podcast. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that might be someone else. But um. Uh, <laughs> but shout that's out to the SpaceX. Most legendary, that's the most legendary shit ever. But though. shout out to SpaceX. Um, I believe when you get calls, you know, when you get really cool phone calls that come in for really dope projects yeah. that you know you have to sign NDAs for and that yeah. you can't talk about. Like, what goes through your head? Are you like, yo, how the fuck did this happen? Yeah. Do you super feel I, yourself? Do to you like go up to your wife and be like, <laughs> no, no, I'm just like, I probably call her and I'm like, oh my God, guess what? No, I, but honestly, I don't sign a lot of NDAs. Like that's not like a normal thing. Um, I've had like a few collectors sign NDAs and it's weird. Like usually the people who ask me to sign NDAs are like people who like, I would be like, okay, I don't know like why. Like investment bankers? Yeah, <laughs> I'd be like, okay, dude, like it's not like you're, 
you know, Bill Gates or something, but like, still like, I was like, okay, sure. Like if that makes you comfortable. Yeah. Cause like, for instance, like you saying like, oh, you did something for the chain smokers. Like that's public, that's fine. But like these guys would be like, just uh, don't say my name. And I'm like, okay, like, are you hiding something? Like, did you <laughs> kill someone? Money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Am I going to get in trouble for this, taking this money? Like whatever. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, so back to space, I want to go to space. That's like a, a actual like goal of mine in my life to go to space. And I think that like recreational space travel is becoming like closer and closer. And obviously like Virgin Galactic just sent two guys like on the outer rim of the atmosphere. Um, so that's going to be a thing. Elon Musk is taking people around the moon, uh, like the, the billionaire guy. And so um, it's becoming more of a thing. And obviously like, it's going to be like, yeah, it's like a million dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars right now. But like, remember when flat screen TVs were like five grand Oh yeah, and now they're like $300. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like, obviously by the time, like I'm like 60 or 80, it'll probably be more of a, like a normal reasonable thing to just do like a quick orbit hit, you know, and like- <laughs> Just float. gotta go up there for a little bit. Just we got shit to do. Free flow for like <laughs> 10 minutes and then back, you know? <laughs> I think that's the fucking craziest thing. I just, I'm obsessed with like, like- knowing what's there, you know what I mean? Mm. And just like, just feeling emptiness and, and fill or fullness at the same time. You know what I mean? I don't know. Well now, I mean, you, you may or may not know the correct people to, to do that one day. So maybe. it hypothetically could or maybe could not happen. Would you go to space? You know, I don't know about that. Like I, I have a hard time like just getting on a fucking plane in New York. Cause Dude, I, yeah. True. If I'm like, you know, eating fucking freeze dried food and, and, and like floating around and, and not being able to like use the bathroom normally. I don't right. know how I'm going to, how I'm going to fare up there. Diapers, like how, baby. Really? Diapers. Dude, what do you think a fucking, what do you think a fucking economy, you know, space plane is going to smell like with fucking 50 <laughs> Dude, people rocking diapers? It, I don't think they're, it's really going to be like that, but I think it'll probably smell great because it's probably going to be like, at first it's going to be like, there's a high class thing. So it's Wait, like, they don't shit, dude. They don't. Yeah, it's like Kim Jong Un. <laughs> okay, he doesn't got, shit. Got it. You know, Pierre Poop. Uh, so, uh, yeah, dude. Rich people don't go to the bathroom. Oh, That's the thing. Damn. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! I don't want to think. I don't want to think about like fifty people crammed into a fucking spaceship. No, I think it'll be probably be like ten or something like that. It'll be like small flights. At first, I mean, who knows? But um, <laughs> you signed an idea. You can't talk about it. I mean, I yeah. Just so you guys know, my idea is not nearly as cool as it's as we're making it don't, sound. Don't don't yeah. d don't like downplay your NDA. All right, guys, I went to the moon. It's the coolest. One. <laughs> we're releasing a documentary next week. <laughs> Buzz Aldrin's yeah. a collector. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh shit, that's what that's what it was. I I actually did a huge mural on the moon. First artist. <laughs> It's all good. First dude to paint the yeah, moon. Yeah, and you know what? I actually did it illegally, but there's uh, Trump hasn't had the space cops or whatever he has going on <laughs> the there space yet. Force. Space force yet. So, you know, you went up, took a piece of the moon, and it's in your newest piece that's showing uh, in a couple months. Dude, Don't I miss it. Yeah, that's actually like I I want to do something like that. Yeah, where yeah. you like chip away like a piece mm -hmm. and just like bring it back down. Yeah, it's I mean, I mean, like entirely possible, dude. I mean, think about that. Like, if you could have something that's gone to space, that's like. You know what I mean? Like that's fucking incredible. I don't know. I think about that kind of stuff all the time. Like what can you make that like based on like situations that you are in, you know, like how can you, like what's, how do you take advantage of that situation in the highest way? Like if you're in certain, if you're in space, like, like how do you bring something back home? How do you like, like, I don't know, like that shit fascinates How do you make me. it tangible? Yeah. Like you can't. I'm just get a fucking t-shirt that says I went to space and, and all I got was a <laughs> shitty t-shirt, dude. <laughs> that's true yeah um dude we just did an hour boom like that is that it that was easy well thanks for having me dude man thank you so much for coming on is it is easy like i i feel like we just caught up it was like 15 minutes yeah, yeah. um we still got to do some uh vegan hangs though vegan vegan we got to do some vegan hangs. and it drives madeleine fucking nuts yeah. so I'm, I'm yeah i'm gonna keep harping on it is it how do you say her name Madeline. Okay, because I always thought it was Madeline. Well, Madeline, if you're lazy. See, so it's like vegan Madeline. Yeah, exactly. Maybe v you just pronounce everything wrong. Right? Yeah, I'm this just, is just suck at talking. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Ex. Next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh God, that's a whole other story. <laughs> it's it. Dude, I get texts every day. Like, thank you, X. Dude, e everyone hits me up. And what's funny? Here's a funny story about actually Ariana Grande. So, I was having a meeting with the owner of her label. I was having a meeting with Avery Lipman. 
and he like has a peace of mind in his office. He was trying to get me to do this thing. Um, I was working on this like project where I was gonna do, I was gonna team up with a label to help release uh, like a record that I liked and make paintings for it and blah, blah, blah. Um, and he was like, oh, can you do Ariana Grande's? Like, it would be so dope, da, da, da. And like, it was like, we started talking about the process and then I ended up not being able to do it because it was too short of time. And then like, you know, a year later she comes out with thank you next. Coincidence or is she just a big I fan? I think not. <laughs> Yeah, oh, shit. Uh, dude, you're the man. Thank you, you so too, much. Man. Uh, tell everyone where they can check out your art. At thank you X on all socials and thank you X.com. Yep. And you're a fun person to follow. So if you do, That's you will good. not be disappointed. You might be disappointed. Unless you like to look at beautiful stuff. Yes. Yeah. If you if you are super into uh, non-colorful stuff, then you should not follow me. Yeah, do not. Yeah. <laughs> do not. Yeah. Uh, special thank you to everybody who's watching this on YouTube. Uh, if you liked it, subscribe. Leave me a comment below so I can write you back. If you are listening, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. If you haven't already, give us five stars. If you want some ADHD merch... You know, all you got to do is hit up fanjoy.co slash ADHD. Side note, I actually uh, did leave a positive review on the Did on the you? Pod. Yeah, five oh, star. Oh, man. Check it out. You're the man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, you know, for uh, for everybody else who wants uh, special ad-free videos uh, and audio versions of the podcast, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash Travis Mills. I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening and for watching. Thank you. Thank you, X. Thank you. I'll see you guys next week. Peace out. Peace out.